The story of Ferdinand is another one of my favorite stories of all time. It's written by Monroe Leaf, drawings by Robert Lawson. Story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf, illustrated by Robert Lawson. Once upon a time in Spain, look at that amazing castle. There was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. But not Ferdinand. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. I don't know if corks actually grow like that, but I don't know, maybe they do. There's Ferdinand, flowers, and all the other little bulls. Castle. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can sit just quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome and because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, it's not very nice, and let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew, grew and grew until he was very big and strong. Certainly is very big and strong. Now he's two years old. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. Madrid. Look, they all have little band-aids all over them because they fight all the time. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to sit just quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. There he is. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. Definitely got some funny hats there. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting, leaping and jumping, so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him, and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting. Instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Uh-oh. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him. And that is just what this bee did to Ferdinand. Uh-oh. Wow! Did it hurt? Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. Here was the largest and fiercest bull of all. Just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. They are, they're very happy. And here's Ferdinand going crazy. So, 
they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. There he is, to Madrid. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing. All those people are very excited down there. And all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. There they are, all the flowers. Look, they have little flags that say Fernando. Fernando. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the banderilleros with long, sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bull and make him mad. Next came the picadores, who rode skinny horses, and they had long spears to stick in the bull and make him madder. Ouch, that would really hurt. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was, and was supposed to stick the bull last of all. There's his sword, there's his cape. Then came the bull. And you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. There he is. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce and all the banderilleros were afraid of him. And the matador was scared stiff. Look how nervous he looks. Ferdinand ran into the middle of the ring and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. There he is. What do you think is going to happen? Mm, we will see. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the lovely ladies' hair, and he just sat down quietly and smelled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smelled. And the banderilleros were mad and the picadores were madder and the matador was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. He's crying. So they had to take Ferdinand home. And there he goes. There's the bull stadium ring. And for all I know, he is sitting there still under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. He is very happy. There he is. The end. Well, I hope you liked it.